right, today we're going to be checking uh, push rods uh, for their leg uh, properly. Um, this is a new set of heads. Uh, and uh, after reading the specs, I saw that they have a 100,000 cylinder valve. So we're going to be checking to uh, make sure that our OE stock push rods are going to work. Um, one of the things we're going to do is, or that we've already done, is uh, we used a, an old head gasket. Uh, it's already been torqued down, it's crunched, it's proper thickness. So that way we can just uh, put the head on, tighten it down with like force stud, just something to snug it down. Also, uh, we run uh, push rod guides, screw and stud. You want those in there too? Same thing. All they gotta do is be snug. They don't have to be all torqued down. But uh, this is the first time I've done this. Uh, I've read plenty of articles. I've seen plenty of vid videos. Talked to plenty of people that, that actually do it. Um, and uh, I've spent about three hours of, of just about ready to blow my brains out stuff. So I'm gonna pass on to you what I learned. Um, first of all. One of the things they, they always tell you to do um, is use these checking springs. They're real lightweight springs. Um, they say if you don't, it'll, it'll uh, bend your checker. Well, after about two and a half hours of marking and rolling and marking and rolling and trying different stuff. I couldn't get any marks on the top of the valve stems. Um, so I decided just to finally screw it and uh, go over to one of my actual valves with my actual springs on it that we use in the race car. And open this up and take the chance and uh, I, I found it doesn't bend it at all. Um, do what you want to do. I'm not an engine builder, you know, if something happens, don't call me because I don't want to hear it, but I'm just passing it on. Anyway, this is a really slick, slick checker. Uh, I looked at uh, some of them, uh, the plastic ones, uh, way too much mass for me. They're just, they're just too much area for screwing up. Um, the other ones that split, and have a, a lock nut on both sides, um, you have to measure them with caliper. So for starters, you gotta have a, a caliper that's, that's over seven inches. Um, and for like a couple bucks more, you can get these from comp cams. Uh, you order them in a, in a certain length, like this is a 7.8, is basically the uh, length of small block Chevy push rod. Um, but what's neat is, it's got some marks. Every revolution is 50 thousandths. So once you're done, you know that you're 100 thousandths over. Now something I, I, I learned too is different companies uh, measure push rods in different ways. Some measure from the actual end of the hole to the hole. Some measure from basically what would be the theoretical radius. Um, so the easiest way for me anyway is just, just stick with the comp cam push rod. Um, we've used their Magnum rods before and, and, and they're an excellent rod. And, uh, they're very price comparable. In fact, they're, they're cheaper than a lot of other rods, push rods. So anyway, uh, what you do, now if you don't use guides, push rod guides like we do, you can just slip this right down in the head, stick it down in the lifter. Um, but because of the knurls, you can't really get it to go down through there. So it's just easier to unscrew it, feed it up through. And what's neat is this thing's machined so that when you screw it back together, the, the lines match up. You don't have to keep taking it apart and trying to get it where it belongs. So anyway, we determined that 
our push rods, these had have to be a hundred thousandths. So I'm just going to go ahead with one turn, with two turns. Just ease it down into the lifter. Um, the first few times I tried to do this, I thought oh, I probably should tape those together, you know, so that it, it doesn't turn one way or the other. Uh, I found that doesn't work with damn. So just, just be careful with it. Um, don't, don't turn it, and you won't have any problems. So what you do is you just uh, clean off the top of the valve, mark it with a Sharpie. Um, something else I learned while doing this is make your marks go from the intake to the exhaust side this way because your lifter is going to be wearing it the opposite way and you know if you across it it's kind of hard to tell what are your strokes from your marker and which, which are the strokes from your uh, roller rocker. Okay. Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the cam is on the base or you know it's, it's on the base of the cam. Slide your rock around. Screw the poly lock down. Okay, and all you want is zero lash. No more, no less. Since we're poor white trash here, we'll do it by hand. I've done this so much today that I'm about sick of this. But what you want to do is rotate the engine. You basically, you want to open the valve so that it rolls on the top of the valve. Um, I found that opening the valve eight times does about the best. It um, leaves a good mark. Uh, less than that doesn't seem to always leave a good mark, and more than that, if you do it by hand, it's flat wearing your ass out. So anyway, we'll take a short break, I'm going to move the camera so that you can see what's going on over on this side, and uh, we'll see what kind of a, a wear pattern we get. Stick around. Okay, now that we've got the camera situated, I'm going to go ahead and rotate the engine. Like I said, we're going to open the valve, which means the rocker is going to go down. Here we go. got the cam back on the base, or, you know, close her back on the base. I'm just going to crack the poly lock. Here's the valve we're dealing with. Let's see what we can get here. But your, our work pattern is here, and it goes down to here. Um, in the video, it might look like it's going from about here to here, but you can see the discoloration from here, the, uh, the work pattern is from here to here, which puts it 
right smack dab in the middle of the valve stem, and that's where you want to be. Um, with the OE valve, or with the OE push rod, we were basically running from about this point to about here. And uh, when you go uh, 200 thousandths over, uh, it was running just almost off the bottom edge to like right into here. And at 150, of course, it was running from about here to here. Let's see if we can get a little better picture, maybe some light. I don't know if be able to really see it. But that's what you're looking for. And uh, it can be kind of tough, just to be honest with you. There's times where you just kind of have to actually sometimes step back and get it in the light just right. Um, but that's all there is to it. So now we know that we've got to uh, order some push rods that are 100,000 over. You do the same thing for the exhaust. Um, really, there's no reason that your, your exhaust should be any different. But um, shit happens. So check them both. Make sure that's what you need. Um, but that's, that's all there is to it. And I mean, really, in all honesty, um, I think these checkers are like, I don't know, 15 bucks maybe, something like that. You know, Sharpie is something you got around the house. Um, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, save, save the $4 or whatever that the check and springs cost and just, just don't even get them. I think they're a total waste of time, even though I know some professionals uh, send me an email telling me I'm full of crap, but maybe so. But anyway, so that's it. Uh, we're going to get some push rods ordered. Um, I'm going to start assembling this motor. So I'll uh, catch you later.